afternoon. Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iRyanI, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 288 now, guys. I've picked out five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. But like always, before we jump into them, I wanna wish everyone here a brand new Happy New Year. This is the first Modded Monday of 2023 and I'm extremely excited to continue this modding journey with you guys. So let's see exactly how 2023 is gonna go in terms of modding because I know 2022 was pretty much the best year in terms of modding. And it's been tons of fun making this series up to this point, so let's just keep it going. But like always, I wanna remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamersups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to check out the link in the description where you can go to their store page and you can can also use the code RTD for a 10% discount on all your purchases. I also want to say don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any brand new mods each and every single week. Now that all that's out of the way, we can jump into this week's mods. And starting us off, we have a brand new beautiful player home called the Whitewater Way Player Home. Now the mod page reads that Whitewater Way is a unique, lore-friendly player home that sleeps 11, including one house carl bed. This mod features everything that you will require in a player home, a full smithing and crafting center, eight mannequins, several weapon display cases, racks and plaques, as well as custom storage containers and bookshelves. There's also a large indoor pool that can be found in the home featuring the auto strip mechanic, which is an unequip and re-equip follower trigger. This trigger operates in the bath and the steam room area as well, and this trigger also doesn't work for players, only NPCs. So whenever an NPC gets close by, they'll auto strip and take off most of their clothes to enter the pool so it's a little more immersive there. This home is also built over the river with gorgeous views on all sides including Dragon Bridge and you can even enlist the help of an attractive new follower who hangs out in the house. Her name is Shade and she's marriageable and an all around great warrior. So if you're looking for a brand new house mod as well as a new companion, this is the mod to definitely check out in your next playthrough. And as you can see as I'm going around and showing off this brand new player home, it's a very nice but small player home that has everything that you're going to need and I absolutely love it. You know, there's not a lot of warp doors, you get the house for free, you don't really have to do anything to get it. So that's a little bit of an immersion break there, you don't really have to do anything to acquire the home. That's something that I always like to see, you know, I like to see house mods that actually have you earn it or buy it in a certain way. But this mod just gives it to you, which is okay, but it gives you all of the different crafting stations that you're going to need and just a nice little jump start to your next character in Skyrim, and I absolutely love it. So if you're looking for a brand new player home to equip in your next playthrough of Skyrim, then I'd strongly recommend downloading and checking out the Whitewater Way Player Home mod. Coming in at the number 4 spot this week, we have a brand new mod that completely transforms every single fort that you travel to in Skyrim. This is the Medieval Forts mod. And the mod page reads that this transforms all of those boring 2011 forts into better and more medieval structures. Hello Skyrim and her people, Legato Gaming here today revealing a mod I've been hoarding for some time now. Okay, check this out, alright? So you know those boring and flat forts all across Skyrim? I thought they could use some 21st century zip and pip just like the other cool games like The Witcher 3. So here it is. Skyrim finally gets some decent aesthetics to their forts. What this mod includes is it enhances all of the major forts in the game so they have more towers and new exterior walls, and this is better eye candy for you Skyrim landscapers out there. Now this mod tries its best to not conflict with any nav mesh out there or cause any problems to performance or NPCs, but user results may vary depending on your own mod list. This mod also doesn't add any new doors or new interiors, and if you use LOD mods you need to regen to utilize these new meshes from afar. 
Now, whenever you ask, will this break my game? The answer is really no, because I have a ton of different mods installed on top of this, and then I can just add the Medieval Forts mod right to the list here, coming in at 2.86 megabytes, which is incredibly small and very impressive of a mod size there, but it worked perfectly, you know, I didn't have any stutters or crashes, but it does say if you're only using texture mods or mesh replacers or even extra NPCs, you should be absolutely fine. But if you are already using mods that completely transform the forts as well, then maybe you should disable that one. You know, kind of just use some common sense whenever you're adding it to your load order because there's a lot of different forts in the game and if you have any mods that touch the forts, it's possible you could have an incompatibility there. But I mean, other than that, these forts look absolutely amazing and it's definitely a lot of fun to go and take on some new challenges, you know, clearing out bandit camps and maybe if you have some difficulty enhancing mods that add more NPCs into the game, that would be also great to throw on top of here. But all in all, if you're looking for brand new medieval towers to face in Skyrim, then I'd strongly recommend downloading the medieval forts mod and adding it to your next medieval playthrough of Skyrim. Coming in at the number 3 spot this week, now I know we've been covering a lot of landscape and grass mods in the past couple episodes, but I thought this was an amazing one that I just couldn't pass up in this week's episode. This is Polly's unique Grasslands of Skyrim mod, and it's a mod pack that completely transforms every single area that you travel to in Skyrim whenever it comes to the flora and grasses. And the mod page reads that after the release of my lush Grasslands of Skyrim bundle, I decided to take a look at making certain aspects of Skyrim's flora more unique and varied. Instead of the usual one color and very samey looking tundras, this bundle included a variety of multi grasses and plant tundras and a unique mixture of yellow and greens, forest grass and also very different multi colored grasses as well as different additional plants too. There's so much included in this mod, including four grass mods and the latest edition of cathedral grass and they even covered areas like Blackreach which is now revamped with new clutter and improved plants. You also have dirt cliffs and better ferns that's part of this bundle, and last but not least, a custom any file that helps eliminate grass pop-in. The mod creator also hopes that everyone enjoys this new bundle of theirs, and they're currently experimenting with even more grass styles and options. They also may add additional little things to this bundle at a later date, so it's possible we may get an update to this mod. Now, like I said, this is a mod pack that comes with a ton of different mods all jam packed into one 114.84 megabyte mod here. And the mods that they included inside of this unique Grasslands of Skyrim mod, we have the Better Ferns 4K mod, and then we have TB's Glorious Dirt Cliffs, the Mushroom Retextures Revamped, Soul Husk Retexture, Poison Bloom Retexture, Cave Worm Plants Retexture, Better Black Reach, and then you have Vanilla Grasses Reimagined, Unique Grasses and Ground Covers, Fall Forest Leaves Texture Replacement, and then even other mods like Mojo Grass, you have various Cathedral Plants and Flowers mods, the Cathedral 3D Nightshade, Death Bell, Snowberries, Clover Plant, Lavender, Tundra Cotton, Thistle, Pine Grass, Mountain Flowers, Plants, and even more mushrooms. I could go on and on with the mods that are included in this giant mod pack here, but just look at these brand new landscapes and grasses that you can see as I'm showcasing this little mod here. So if you like what you see and you want to transform your landscapes and grasses in Skyrim, then I'd strongly recommend downloading the Polly's Unique Grasslands of Skyrim mod and adding it to your next playthrough. Coming in at the number 2 spot this week, we have a brand new DLC sized mod that adds a completely new player home as well as tons of different areas that you can take screenshots and just relax outside of Skyrim. This is the Goma Pero Land mod. And the mod page reads, Welcome to the country of Goma Pero. It's a resort where the Dovahkiin and his friends and family can improve their health, relax, and have fun. There's no dragons, no joggers, or trolls here, there's just silence and grace. You can enter the land of Goma Pero by using a fast movement marker near Riverwood, and there's also a trapdoor in the same place, as well as an entrance with a map marker in the express between Riverwood and the Goma Pero country. Now it's also important to note that this mod throws lore and anything Skyrim related completely out the window because this is not lore friendly at all. It's a completely brand new area outside of Skyrim that just kind of takes Skyrim and makes it into its own artwork. It kind of uses the creation kit as a canvas and just makes a giant work of art and a brilliant land outside of Skyrim that's just absolutely beautiful. You know, it doesn't fit the Skyrim theme in many ways, you know, you'll see different things from Skyrim up here, but a lot of it is just custom meshes and textures 
textures that you've never seen before that's just been added in and it looks absolutely amazing and like I said they kind of turned the creation kit in Skyrim into a work of art you know this is a brilliant player home or just area to escape from Skyrim where you won't even feel like you're playing Skyrim anymore so if you want to just have a little bit of an escape and you want to get away from Skyrim and the possibilities and things that you can do within Goma Paraland are endless and that's definitely why this mod's featured here to number two spot this week so if you're looking to completely escape the Skyrim lifestyle then I'd strongly recommend downloading and traveling to Goma Paraland for yourself. Coming in at the number one spot this week, we have yet another area that you can travel to completely outside of Skyrim in its own DLC-like expansion. This is the Blackland mod. And the mod page reads that this adds a new island called Blackland with a new village that has tons of new NPCs that'll need your help to solve their problems. You also find new unique dungeons in your adventure, presenting new challenges and new powerful and unique spells and powers to use and discover. We also have mini games with replay value to entertain you when you aren't exploring, and we also have new survival modes for the brave which add new different types of mechanics to survival mode. First off you have the destructible weapons where your weapon will degrade with use, destructible armor which your armor will degrade with use, as well as a destructible shield so it will also degrade with use. You also can feel sleepy so sleep deprivation will cause bad defects, and then you also have the starving which is food deprivation will cause bad defects. Finally, there's hidden secrets and easter eggs to enrich your exploration, so in total we have a new island, 10-20 to 20 hours of new gameplay, a new village, dungeons, quests, NPCs, spells, minigames, survival modes, and tons of different secrets and easter eggs. So there's so much to unpack in this tiny 120.94 megabyte mod, which is incredibly impressive because this is a new land outside of Skyrim like I said with all of these quests and tons of new hours of gameplay, and this mod's actually fully voiced too. Every NPC that you meet will have a custom, you know, voice line that they'll say to you and it'll be completely different than the vanilla game of Skyrim, so I'm very impressed they were able to combine all of this into a very small 120.94 megabyte mod. And then how to actually start this mod, it's incredibly easy, whenever you start using this mod on a new playthrough, you'll already have a new spell tome or book added to your inventory called Teleport to Blackland. All you have to do is read it to learn the new Teleport to Blacklane spell, and then you can use the spell to teleport. But unfortunately it only works inside of the Riverwood Trader at the moment. They do plan on adding and updating this mod in the future as well, maybe adding new areas to explore or more quests, but this is already a giant island that you can explore and there's tons of cutscenes inside of the quests as well, which I didn't expect. You know, a lot of these quests look extremely well made and handcrafted and just perfect, and that's definitely why Blacklands featured here to number one spot this week. So if you're looking to completely escape Skyrim, but also remain lore friendly, or at least somewhat lore friendly, because this isn't completely blown out of the water like the Goma Paro Land mod, but if you're looking for a lore friendly way Way of doing some brand new quests and exploring a brand new area in Skyrim, then the Blackland mod is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out, and that's why it's featured here to number one spot this week, so I'd strongly recommend downloading and taking on this brand new quest and area for yourself. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the top five Skyrim mods of the week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and if you did I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new it really helps me out a lot and if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future top five mod episodes be sure to let me know in the comment section below or you can join our discord. I'll be sure to leave the discord link in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can join us on there and leave mod suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me and yeah that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and I'll talk to you guys later.